Sup, 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 my name is Rory for the Yu-Gi-Oh! Council, and this is Mastering the Blue Eyes Part 2. If I sound a little bit different, it's because we're using a new microphone setup, so I need a little bit of quality feedback from you guys, just how to adjust my position on it. Um, I'm pretty much using one that I normally use for voice acting, so I hope this video will find you well in the long run, and I just want to make a quick mention, sorry for the wait. It just, as you can see in front of you, there's a lot to cover when it comes to supports of Blue Eyes. And that's what today's video is about. We're going to go over um, all the different kinds of support. The indirect, the direct, the outside, um, played in a totally different deck because you could totally splash it because of said card. And we're going to mention um, some decks that you can actually run a lot of these cards in. We're going to touch upon that. I believe part 3 will touch more upon that. And then part 4 will be more about the bad matchups, because there are some. This deck is not perfect, and we are developing it continuously, but I still feel pure or chaos for the two best variants of Blue Eyes. But I respect all the Blue Eyes versions, so I wanted to go down and run down all the different support cards. Gets indirect, uh, ind oh, I'm sorry, direct support. Direct support being the Blue Eyes White Dragon, of course, and then we have, from the structure deck, we have Maiden. And then we also have, if you look at it as support, the Malefic Blue Eyes White Dragon, which I guess, if you want to play that route, but it's extremely hard to, I will have a build coming out that's like super trolly. Um, it, mo it mostly focuses on Malefic Blue Eyes White Dragon um, for like super speed and stuff. You know, stuff like that, but you can also spam it out. I mean, it's direct support because it's still Blue Eyes, you know, in the name. White Stone of Legend, this was actually great support, and still is. It gives you that dragon, um, the Blue Eyes, straight from the deck when it's sent. Kaiba Man, this thing's pretty much outdated. I mean, it it only takes it from the hand, That's and that's the direct minus two. One for playing Kaiba Man, and then one for Kaiba Man's effect actually going off. Which, given that it gets through skill drain... It's not really still worth it. I, I, I like. I don't like Kyber Man. I just don't see a build that can actually run it. But I still have to mention it for the video because it's still direct support. And when it first came out, it was actually really good. But right now, it's kind of bad. Blue Eyes Shining Dragon. A lot of people count this as, like, oh my God, I cannot like make the requirements. I actually found a way to do it, and that's gonna be a separate deck. But this again is kind of one of those outdated supported cards. There are ways of pulling it off. It's not running your typical blue eyes deck. It's kind of like hyper turbo blue eyes. It's a, and I mean, it's shining. Why wouldn't you want to do it? I mean, everyone you know wants to play that at some point in time. Paladin of the White Dragon. It's direct support because you get it straight from the deck. And still to this day, one of my favorites. And it's to me in my eyes. If you're gonna play blue eyes and try to go for ultimate and shining, this is definitely one that's gonna help you get there. Burst Dream of Destruction. Now, a lot of people may not like this card. In builds with Prisma and sometimes Pure, I say sometimes, it could be really trolly against a lot of decks that have a habit of swarming. The only downside is that Blue Eyes White Dragon cannot attack the turn you activate it. So it's got the downside, but it's, like I said, it's kind of trolly because, like Raigeki, it goes off. It's really funny. So, Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon, now I don't like in Pure, that's me, because Pure doesn't have the dragon count to actually, in my eyes, make it run. In Chaos, it's great, but Red Eyes just allows you to special it from the hand, from the grave, get that constant beat out. It works really nicely with Azure Eyes, and of course, in the Disaster Dragon builds in Chaos, it runs, you know, the best. Flame Royal Guard, now it's not really direct support to Blue Eyes. It is a vanilla dragon, so it gets those two benefits of giving Blue Eyes what it needs. is the vanilla support, which means just a normal monster, and it also gives it a tuner and fire target for the Dragon Ruler build. And if you're not into the Dragon Ruler build, I understand. Trust me, I'm really not either, but some people are. So I like to be respectful to every kind of you know person who wants to play Blue Eyes. Eclipse, you're pretty much going to only see this in Don't Ask Me Why. I have people who do this, and I'm actually create. I want to. I want to play it and try to make it work better. Is a light swarm build and a chaos dragon. Chaos dragon already shown off that works wonders, but a light swarm build basically you send the eclipse to banish out the blue eyes and you do stupid things with the blue eyes. Pretty much the same kind of setup that you would do with. 
I guess Chaos Dragons is kind of odd to explain. I had to show it more from what I've seen. Decoy Dragon, again, this to me is one of those like outdated cards. You could still tech it. I mean, it works better in the Disaster build and the Dragon Ruler build because the Dragon Ruler, you're kind of low on those fire targets. and You don't want it to have tons of them, but this is actually a nice target. It's not bad. It's direct dragon support, so it's going to bring that back, that blue eyes when they attack it. And it will throw some people off. Totem Dragon. If you want to go the old school tribute route, this is the way to go. It's Totem Dragon, that pure dragon build with blue eyes. And yes, there are actually pure builds with blue eyes like that. And it's really cool because, let me explain why it's really cool. Um, I'm actually losing my place here. It's You get a 3000 beat stick with light and darkness dragon on the field, you're pretty much set to go. And it's not that hard to do that. Hi, Yugi514. Um, definitely go subscribe to his channel because... He, he's a big part of the council. I just want to mention that. So I'm just going to click that. Okay, it went off. So, um, Bright Star Dragon. I mentioned this before. I'm going to clarify this again. Increase the target's level by two. Meaning that it increases onto what the target has. Meaning that if Maiden has one level, then it's going to add two more onto it, allowing you to go level seven. I just want to make that clear. Because apparently some people just, um, they don't see that. I I'm sorry, but I don't know how you can't see that. I mean, maybe the wording was a little confusing for them. That's cool. Just clarifying. But Bright Star is one of those I target Maiden, and I'm going to boost up two levels. You can also do silly stuff with it. If we ever got a rank 12, you could boost up Red Eyes. Or if you really want to get super sacky with this, I'm not even joking about this. If you want to really play Red Eyes, and you want to play Goose Off Max and Trag, and just be really sacky, you can have Blue Eyes on the field. Off of red eyes, right? Now keep this in mind, all special summoning, right? You know, somehow, call the haunted, whatever. And then you summon Bright Star, boost the blue eyes by two levels, because it's already level eight, it's gonna become level ten, and you can go goose off max with blue eyes. That's pretty funny in my book. Um, other tar other things that target or Delta Flyer, I don't really care for Delta Flyer because it's already a tuner. But the reason I bring it up is because of Tempest, the uh, Dragon Ruler. I had to bring it up at some point. Guard of the Storm Dragon. If it's equipped to a normal monster, see, we get that normal support. We get that Dragon Tuner. We get send a card to Contuans. Then you get to protect it and Purus. Now, it's not going to protect you from Dimensional Prison, so you definitely still want to have Lance in most builds. And the reason I say for most builds is because back row is such a pain. This is an OCG only card right now, and Mr. Blue Dude 33 has shown this in Subscriber Showcase. For those of you who have not seen Subscriber Showcase, you can actually read the effect right now. Video's in HD, and it's clear enough to see if you make it bigger. But um, for those of you who don't want to read it, this card's into the grave, you can someone. You're going to do this on your opponent's turn, and you're going to get a Blue Eyes on the field. It's kind of like a Pseudo Maiden. Um, I see Decoy Dragon as the Maiden before Maiden, and it gets that Dragon support. I don't really care for it, but that's me. Tempest, Dragon Ruler of Storms. Obviously, search out all the dragons. It's generic. You can bring Blue Eyes to the hand, and some of you may go, well, why do I want a Blue Eyes to the hand? Um, if you're playing... <sighs> I have it somewhere here. Trade-in, obviously. That's an obvious one. If you're playing the Ancient Rules, or the Photon Sanctuary, or if you're I don't know what there there's a couple here. And we're gonna go down them. But you could do stupid things with it. Now, just for the fact that it's generic dragon, I had to bring it up. This is definitely one to pass on. Is Dragon Treasure. This comes out of Legend of Blue Eyes, it's very old, and back then it was a shinizzle. I can't believe I used that word. Um, but pretty much if two people had blue eyes on the field, because remember at this time Monster Reborn was at, you know, three and stuff then pretty much the go-to plan was equip this to blue eyes and just destroy it and done dragon deal. shrine this That's is um, decks around, so i don't advise using this with trade in and draw power because it's going to interrupt your draw power and it's crazy as that sounds so it's kind of one or the other it's either you're going to have your draw power or you're going to have mill mill um i would only suggest in really chaos or just mill dragons which mill dragon sounds kind of funky but think of it this way, you could do it with Dragon Rulers, you have your two cards set up, Banish Belt out, Return from Different Dimension, we already know that thing's broken. You can get away with running it in that. So, play this in Chaos Dragons, or Blue Eyes Chaos Dragon, however you want to word that. Send the Blue Eyes, send the send an Eclipse or a Dark Monster, and you have perfect setup. Well, you're not going to have setup if you send Eclipse, but send Trihorn, 
and send the clips and you have a perfect setup right there. I'm burning up High Priestess because of the Spellbook variant and I will have it at some point at the council. I just don't really want to build it because I don't really like Spellbooks. That's just me. But um, then we get on to one of my favorite builds which will probably be coming out sometime soon is the Ninja build. Now it's just super trolley ninjas and basically you can have a huge back road. This is where safe zone really shines. And I should have had it in this video, but I pretty much mentioned I think the combo video, so I'm just mentioning safe zone now. But Hanzo with the trap card, you can actually get away with running it, you know, get to red eyes, get to that blue eyes, or you really want to get sacky, you can just get the blue eyes straight from the deck and or you know, just whatever. You can do stupid things. Heretic um, they give off normal dragon support. These two are probably the best ones to go for blue eyes. Most likely him, because you could just splash him in the blue eyes deck, and it's gonna pull it right out of the deck. If you don't want to run maiden, which I don't understand why you would really wouldn't want to run maiden. Probably the only reason this deck does not get love is armor deities, and I've said this before. <clears throat> As long as you have Effect Railer, Breakthrough Skill, Fiendish Chain, or Chalice somewhere in your deck, or even Skill Drain, probably not Skill Drain, then you won't really have a problem with Armor Deities. It's not that much of a threat. I'm not being uh, I'm not being mean, just really not. You just need to shut it down for the one turn, get your blue eyes, and just run it over and be done. Um, this actually comes out of Shadow Spectres, if I'm not mistaken. This is Rise Belt, the Star Awakener, so this is touching upon the Psychic Support. And that sounds kind of weird saying Psychic Support, but... There you go. Um, basically, these two target Maiden. Um, this one's only once per turn, so it's actually the better of the two, I guess. I mean, it's wins, so you do funky stuff with it. They both win. Um, Rise Belt, the Tuna Star Master. My problem is, is that it has to be Special Summon. And originally, I was going to use it over Bright Star. But for those of you who want to run it, you're going to need some way to put it back in the deck. I'm not even, like, trolling. I'm not even being a, a, um, I don't want to say, I'm trying not to use profanity. I don't want to be that guy that says it, but you really do need Magical Mallet, you know, to actually put it back to, so that way you can just, you don't play it with everything, but you put it, you put the Rise Belt back just so you don't have to deal with having Rise Belt not in the deck because Emergency Teleport's pretty much going to be dead then. And hence why I didn't like it, and I prefer Bright Star, even though it eats up a normal summon. Um, this goes back to probably the original competitive build, which was running three Prismas and Shadows and milling the blue eyes, getting the name, and you know, just like super trolley stuff. But it's still going to get a mention because I still think the deck has a lot of potential for a Shining variant if you want to go that route. So I definitely want to touch upon that as support. Just because, you know, fusion support, if you want to go there. Honest is just generic light support. It should be included in most of the builds. Uh, now, the reason I say most of the builds is because some builds just cannot support it. Prophecies can't really support it. Um, Dark Worlds have a hard time supporting it because it could just be dead. And the Dragon Ruler build is not even going to dare try to touch it because having that one spot can cost you the game without question. And I know that sounds weird to say, but it's true. Um, we're going to touch upon a lot of older stuff, which is Summoner's Art. You add a level 5. It's basically a reinforcement to the army for the bigger dragons. This is really good with Trident if you really want to dedicate 2-3 spots. To me, it's kind of dead, so you got to run more stuff not to make it dead, and that's why I always hate about it. This works good if you want to run the 8 variant. The 8 variant is something that I was discussing with a friend. And I'm actually working on, basically, it spams out rank 8 monsters. <clears throat> and you can also make Triton Dragon off it, which should be in the extra deck area, but it's not. So, we'll mention there. But, um, it just helps you spam stuff into the graveyard with Triton. <clears throat> Drago Connection, this is also like that, you know, that rank 8, you know, I have a dragon on the board, um, in my hand. I got it off Summoner's Art, I'm going to play the Dragon Connection and just get another one. So pretty much deck thinning, and it leaves potential. I know how many people hate this. It leaves potential for a new Exodia build to actually come out. Photon Sanctuary, I'm mentioning this because it's actually really good. Gives you the two tokens that can't be used as Synchro Material Monsters. That's perfectly fine. You know what? Sack them, done, and summon Blue Eyes. So 
if you constantly want to have blue eyes on fields, there's plenty of ways. Ancient rules allows you to set a special summon level five or higher normal monster from your hand, and you can uh, use that with Dark Storm or Trihorn Dragon or this guy over here, which I'm gonna make pop up on the screen real quick. Wee, that guy I mentioned him. So it's vanilla dragon support. Dragon's Mirror, it's pretty much the best way to bring out a Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon if you want to go that route. It is the best way. Fluor Summoning Dragon and Lord of D are old cards. They are very minus. The minus is like you're losing card advantage, and I wouldn't really advise doing that. So kind of stay clear of these two. The Dragon's Mirror you can get away with at one or two, but I just don't like it. That's me because we lost Future Fusion. That's the reason I don't like it. Uh, Wing Beat of a Giant Dragon, this is back row removal in the dragon's, like, greatest way. The only problem with it is that they could chain compulsory evacuation device, and you're going to lose out on actually returning it because they returned it beforehand. So if we had more cards that return stuff like that, then this card would be a lot less good, but right now it's extremely good because, well, get it back to the hand, play trade in, do stupid stuff. Um, Stamping Destruction. It's like an MST, but it has a 500 burn. Um, I don't really care for it because you have to control a dragon type monster to actually use it. So stick to your normal MST if you can. If you don't have an MST, which believe me, some people won't, it's it's perfectly fine. You'll find this in the Blue Eyes deck, so it's perfectly fine to use too. Trade in and cards of Contuance. These are the two best things for draw power when it comes to this deck. The Trident works best in the rank 8 builds, pure, not really Chaos Dragons, and the Cards of Constituents in the builds that have the tuners in them. Diary deck is going to be able to use both. Pr primarily, you want to use these in the pure build. The Dragon Ravine, uh, again, Dragon I'm going to touch upon that mill. for the mill. So basically, send Whitestone, send two Whitestones, and get two Blue Eyes in the hand kind of method. If you want to go that route, it's perfectly fine. I haven't really found something that's competitive enough to run it outside Dragoonies. And I know um, probably Dragoonie, Blue Eyes, someone will touch upon that if it's viable. I haven't really found a version that works fully yet. Fully, fully yet. I think there is. And basically it spans out Trident Dragon, but hey, that's me. Now, a lot of you <laughs> may have mentioned this. I find this more of a side deck than anything because it's kind of situational and it can't really chain because it's a counter trap, but Champion's Vigilance. Um, the reason I say it can't chain is because think, now think here for a second. When I say chain, I mean something like this. Dragon's, you know, Recarnation, which we're going to touch upon a little bit. But pretty much it's just MSC bait unless you have it and then you're kind of forced to use it. So I would play this in builds that run higher trap cards, um, higher back row, things like uh, that matter. If I'm going to run the shining So if I'm running the Shining version, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually use the Gale Dogma, which I'm going to actually show that build off at some point in time. But I'm going to use it, and I'm going to have a blue eye on the field and protect it with Vigilance. So anything that's going to get over Shining will not be able to. If you want to run it, I definitely advise running in the side deck. Is that it's kind of a oh my god, you actually do have it kind of situation. Now let's talk revival. Revival gives us birthright, symbols of duty, swing of memories, and silver sky. We can also use call of the haunted. That's pretty obvious. Um, I didn't really want to mention it because I figured it was obvious. Um, Pursuto, <coughs> Pursuto, uh, monster like Reborn-ish cards is Return from Different Dimension and this here which is the reincarnation we're going to talk we're going to finally talk about it shortly <clears throat> make sure I don't lose my voice here but Birthright it's just for normal monsters you can use it kind of like a Call of the Haunted Call of the Haunted should always be your first go and then Silver's Cry your second Swinger's mem Swinger Memories allows you to bring a normal mo a monster back from the graveyard but it's destroyed at the end phase so if you really want to get Saki you could play Granel in the build or Weisel and just do stupid stuff so you play off it symbols of duty you send a normal monster from your graveyard and special summon one monster from either um, either graveyard and equip it with this so if you want to really steal stuff from your opponent's graveyard kind of like monster reborn this is a route to go birthright is just chainable 
Call of Haunted is too, but this only brings back normals and it's still the same kind of thing as Call of Haunted. Silver's Cry, this comes out of the structure deck. And it's probably my favorite because you can target a dragon that's normal and then you can only activate once per turn. So you can bring back the Flame Well Guard, you can bring back Blue Eyes, you can bring back Red Eyes. So it doesn't, I know we're talking about Blue Eyes, but Blue Eyes Red Eyes deck is an actual thing and it's pretty funny. So I may make it at some point. It gives new meaning to chaos. Um, but touching upon that, <clears throat> it allows more flexibility with the builds. And this is one you should always max out in most builds. Most. Um, it's super derpy, der derpy tech in Heretics. In the Spellbook variant, it's not going to work. The Dragon Rulers, I haven't, I'll be honest, I haven't fully tested it. So I'm going to have to have someone who actually has gone in depth and tested it. And for the Chaos Dragon build, it's not needed. Return for a different dimension works perfect in that deck. If you can, you know, if you don't, if you want to go 41, 42, that's definitely where they go. Kaiser Seahorse. We're talking. We're talking about tributes. Um, so if you want to go the monarch route, <laughs> I know someone wants to, and I do now think it's viable. Is Kaiser Seahorse and Dragonic Tactics and Photon Booster, which sounds crazy, can actually target Maiden. That has nothing to do with tributes, but I just wanted to mention this. So, um, the reason I don't really like it, I prefer Lance, is Lance has a lot of flexibility. Lance, Dress, and Chalice, but Photon Booster, if you want direct, this is direct. Um, Dragonic Tactics, you tribute to Dragon Monsters, and you special summon one level 8 from your deck. This works best in the Heretic build. If you really want to play it, that's the best option. Kaiser Seahorse, this works in a generic light blue eyes deck, I guess you want to put it that way. Where you could play off light and darkness dragon and blue eyes. It's kind of just like controlling the board with big monsters. Now this works best in if you want to tech it in chaos dragons, and it works great in the dragon ruler build. Because it's chainable, you use up your dragons. Dub K Dad mentioned this. I know some of you may not be subscribed to him, but that's why I have to bring it up. Um, basically, they MST it, you're gonna chain it, get one of your banish back, and laugh at them. Now, the pure builds don't really have a lot of banish blue eyes out. The chaos dragon builds do. They have a lot of dragons that get banished. <clears throat> the dragon ruler build has tons. The heretic doesn't really have any. And the outside, as I was saying, if you want to play straight blue eyes, um, burst breath is like straight dragon. I'm sorry, straight dragon. Burst Breath is definitely one to play because it is going to allow you to tribute stuff. It, it works as funny tech in Heretics. Um, not for the Zeros, but more for the bigger Heretics. So pretty much, if I Silver's Cry or Blue Eyes and I play Burst Breath, I'm going to be able to take out a lot of monsters. When they swarm me, I will take out everything at once. So it's very nice. Um, this, my friend Mikey... Um, teched in. Now, I'm going to give my, like, op uh, opinion on this. I don't really care for it. Basically, when a face-up light dragon monster, you control a stack target, it's an honest. Now, the best option to run this is going to be in a light pure dragon build, which is kind of unseen. So, I wouldn't... It looked like the image was a little messed up. I wouldn't really tend to run it. I kind of stay away from it. But I want everyone... Who's watching these vi watching this video to actually let me know what they liked and what they don't like support wise and what you feel we didn't touch upon and I'll mention it. But Dragon Capture Jar, I had a oh god, I had to mention this. <sighs> this is gonna sound nuts. If you want to get troll, like you want to go troll level, okay? This isn't like I'm not suggesting you do this competitive level, okay? Just stay with me here. Um. This works as funny tech for the pure build to actually, for the pure build to like kind of get pooped on, I guess. If they're playing Lance, you're in trouble. <laughs> you're in trouble. Um, because it'll just block roads and be done. But this is one to stay away from. It's kind of funny. Dragon Soul Castle, this works best with the mill because it gives you that Pursuito. Like, you know, if it gets destroyed, you're going to go plus. And it also works really good with the Dragon. The Dragon Rulers, because you'll get the plus off them, and then when it's banished, you get one back. So it works out really nicely for that plus-minus system. So everything you're putting into, uh, commitment-wise, from the deck to make your plays will actually pay off in the long run in a recovery. 
And now when I say recovery, I mean like if your opponent has six cards and you have three, but you have three of these on board and three banished dragons, you now have equal terms in recovery. So that means you can now build off plays that you normally wouldn't be able to if you had gone minus too much. So, Dragon's Rage, I have mentioned this, works, it works okay in a pure dragon build. I wouldn't really dedicate a spot to it, and this is probably one that, it's, it's outdated. If you're gonna, if you really want the, the pure run guard of the Storm Dragon, it works lovely. The Dragon's Beard, again, outdated, we have better options, just play Trap Sun. And not even hating. Let's talk fusions. Okay, the fusions are probably the hardest ones to pull off. King Dragoon is just generic, and if you could pull it off, oh my god, this thing is like Azurize, and it's pretty funny. And you get to special one dragon from the hand once per turn. So it, it works nicely with the summoner's art builds and the dragon connection. You're going to keep getting them to the hand, and you can abuse them from there. So you're not really losing any you know cards. You're just committing to the field. You already have the protection off it. The Blue Eyes Ultimate, um, kind of just tech right now for the Prisma builds and kind of just derpy to jump over stuff. But here's where this card actually does shine. Is that Gale Dogma, I believe that's the proper name. You pay 3,000, you're going to send one um, monitor from your extra deck to the graveyard. Blue Eyes Ultimate doesn't care how it's sent. It can be revived because it just, it doesn't have that clause that says... This card can only be special summoned by, you know, Fusion Summon. That's what made it so powerful during Cyberstein in Japan, when it was the thing. Um, Five-Headed, again, this one's kind of outdated. I mean, given that it can't be destroyed by battle with an Earth, Water, Fire, Wind, or Dark, there's still Light. And I know not every deck's going to play Light, but they could just pop it and be done. And if you have King Dragoon, you want to do that commitment. The problem is you're going to run over King Dragoon and just go and pop your five-headed dragon that you put in a lot of work in with Direwolf. So that's one I definitely wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't really recommend. Dragon Master Knight, it's only dedicated builds. I wouldn't touch it any, any other way. I wouldn't mess with it. It's going to take a lot of commitment. Star Eater, I mentioned this one. Um, maiden plus a blue eyes, a maiden that was targeted by Bright Star, just so we're clear. Because 3 plus 8 equals 11. And I mentioned earlier in the video how that worked. So, and Star Eater will pretty much steal gains, but I still prefer, I still prefer, <laughs> I still prefer, I can't even speak right, Azurai Silver Dragon because it works a lot better in the long run. You're kind of stealing. Uh, momentum from your opponent because now it's like oh great I gotta jump over this thing with a 3,000 defense and don't ask me why it's showing 200 defense on here if you could see that I don't know why it's not why it is freaking death pro um, it, it knows my awesomeness of mastering the blue eyes black rose dragon this is definitely one that if, if you're running synchros these are definitely ones to include if you can't get star eater you'll be fine without it I'm being honest um, Star Eater is only for the builds that run Rise Belt or Bright Star. That's it. Can't really get away with this one. So I should, let me clear that up. Rise Belt to Tuner Star Master, not Rise Belt to Star Awakener, just so we're clear. Um, Star Awakener will allow you actually to go into, um, but upcoming we have Vulcan and we have Orion Dragon. That's already, yeah, it's kind of good. And Ancient Sacred Wyvern for anything that can go Level 7, this thing steals games, get your hands on it, done. <laughs> Alright, let's talk about Exceeds and we're going to wrap up this video and then we're going to go into part 3 in the next one and I'm trying to find a paper that actually had it real quick. Found it. Alright, Ma um, Mastery in the Blue Eyes part 3 will be about deck styles because we kind of touch upon it and I want to touch upon it more, there's so many to touch upon and then part 4 will probably be, yeah, it will be the bad matchups and how to counter them and siding and will be part five so just just so we have a little bit of outline those are all should be out this month i'm trying to do it like once per week it's kind of hard with coffee time and all the editing and stuff but eh, i'm not complaining i love it so let's talk about exceeds if you want to run the the hyperactive eight build that i said which was pretty funny um 
Oh, um, uh, at the end of the video, because someone's going to ask, I will touch more upon about what part three will actually go in depth about, just a little bit, so no one's really confused. All right, so Neo Galaxy Eyes Photon Dragon, if you can actually get three out. Diffusion, I'm not even joking when I'm not even trolling when I say this. Diffusion plus this is just, I'm sorry, what am I saying? Diffusion plus Blue Eyes Ultimate equals this, and it's just, it's priceless. Or if you want to be super troll, just sit behind this all day and let them just spit out and just overlay to it. I mean, it's a 4500 Peter. It's the equivalent, it's Zexel's equivalent to the Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon. Um, I wouldn't really recommend it. I would more recommend this or the Heretic, which the Heretic is in here. Um, number 107, Tachyon um, Dragon. is basically because once per ba uh, battle phase... At the start of your battle phase, you can detach one exceed, negate the effects of all face-up monsters on the field. I lost my place. And their attack and defense... Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Also, their attack and defense become their original attack and defense. So if they're power boosted, they're going to lose it. Um, and then... I just want... I'm like losing my place here. I'm not really sure that because I don't really use it. Because <clears throat> I don't feel a need to. I mean, someone's going to, so that's cool. I just like to respect it. Each time an opponent's card effect resolves this card gains 1000 attack until the end phase it can also make a second attack during each battle phase so this also is one of those cards that kind of steals games and you're going to get your money's worth when you put in when i say that when you put in two blue eyes to make it or a dark storm and a blue eyes or two dark storm or whatever level eight you're making it um thunder and dragon this should be pretty much all builds that run pure blue eyes on a consistent basis that can bring that blue eyes that said blue eyes out to the board and get two of them out consistently or just if you want to be a you know you want to be a game stealer turn for a different dimension with this oh god is it priceless the look on her face but watch out for the book of moons that's why you play lance thunder and dragon will steal games it's a giant dark hole you could use this with the upcoming stardust the manga stardust and th there is a way to do that. I'm going to show that in the deck style builds. And one of the ways I actually do it is just super troll. But I don't want to spoil it. So I'm not even going to like touch upon it further than that. But um, there is a Synchro 8 build for this deck. Uh, for Blue Eyes. But Thunder and... Oh god, he just steals games. And you see it on a stock market video. He's starting to rise up in price. So if you haven't gotten it, now is the time to get it. Get the Duelist League one, whatever you can. This is one that makes this deck viable. Uh, Queen Dra uh, Dragoon. Now, she's definitely one you want in your rank fours. It's probably one of the two... Um, I, I, don't, I hate using the word staple. I hate using that word. But semi-staple. Um, because you want the Emerald first. But the, dra uh, the Queen Dragoon, she's perfect for Blue Eyes. Because you don't care about losing the effect. Blue Eyes doesn't have an effect. It's not going to hinder Blue Eyes. You're going to get 3,000 beat stick on the field. And, why? I mean, come on. It can't be destroyed by battle. You have this out in a mirror match. This card will save you. There are two cards in a mirror match that will, like, just d d wreck Blue Eyes. When you see Maiden, there are two cards. It's this one, which sounds nuts. I know. I'm going to explain in a minute. I'm going to explain. And I would say Armored Deities without question. But Armored Deities is a little bit pricey. For some people. So Queen Dragoon. Basically the way that works. Is you go into special the blue eyes back. You go and attack Maiden. Maiden's effect is going to go off. It's it's better if you have Dragoon. And another monster on the board. Just so we're clear about this. And then you're going to attack the blue eyes. Now even though both monsters have equal points. Because of her effect. Dragon type monsters you control. Cannot be destroyed at bow. You'll be wiping the floor out of their blue eyes. By this in a huh for a second so this actually does help in a mirror match quite a bit and of course finally that got so emerald because it just brings back that non-effect monster in your graveyard meaning it brings back blue eyes or it just brings back <coughs> vanilla synchros because they're they don't have an effect <laughs> but there you go so don't they have effect they'll bring it back you can also recycle stuff to, back to deck it's kind of rare when you do that but it pays off sometimes. So I hope this video, you guys all enjoy it. If you did, like the video, comment, subscribe if you haven't. Help us hit a 1,000 subscribers. And check out our Facebook page where 
the reason I bring up the Facebook page is because YouTube a lot of the time is unreliable with the subscription box. I noticed that. I get a lot of emails. Why didn't you guys upload yesterday? We did. YouTube subscription box is messing you up, and we're sorry, but like our Facebook page, and you won't have that issue because we always like put it up 20 minutes after the video goes up. Now, I know not everyone's into blue eyes. That's perfectly fine. But for those of you who are, and for those of you who are waiting for this video and who support this video, I just want to take a second and say thank you for your time spent watching this video. I hope it, I hope it helped you. I hope that it got your brain flowing from all the different kind of styles. I spent about four hours just digging through all Dev Pro to find the stuff, but it was all worth it in the long run. So now that I'm done filling it, I'm off to go edit and then I'm going to work on part three which is the textiles now I, I, I mentioned real quick I have to mention it that I was going to talk about that um, basically I'm going to show you an entire deck list and like give you an example of that and then talk about it and how the weaknesses and the strengths are so we're going to get really in depth with it finally get really in depth because now we know all the support we know the history of blue eyes we know what to look for the f well not for the future yet that's kind of you know <laughs> video 50 yeah there's gonna be it's a long series planned out but we know what to pretty much build upon now now we know we got a good feel what kind of works what doesn't now we're going to start looking at a lot of different deck builds and how they differentiate. And part four will definitely touch upon that. And just to make a mention for some of those builds, we're going to be looking at Pure, Chaos, Heretic, Dark World, Dragon Ruler, the Spellbook, the Hero build. And as long as I can get it done in time, we'll probably throw in the Ninja build. And we'll throw in the Blue Eyes Shining build. And I may throw in a Malefic Gravekeeper build that will have... Some funny tech cards in there, if it works. I'm still kind of in theory with that right now with my council brethren who actually, you know, help with this. But I hope this video finds you well and I hope you enjoy it. And sorry for taking up those last kind of seconds. I just wanted to make sure everything was clarified and spoken well enough. And I will talk more about it. Well, blue eyes in the next couple of videos. And I am still working on a lot of decks. So I don't want to just keep pumping out blue eye support. Like for the council, that is our main baby right now. That's that's our that's our freaking that's our baby. We love our baby. We're gonna grow that child up. The child's gonna become an adult, go to college, have a have a little blue eyes baby or son. We'll figure it out. But I hope this video finds you well. And I'll see you next video. Let me just wrap this up. Peace. Thanks for watching.